So welcome po sa inyong lahat. A blessed evening to everyone. Thank you for thank you again for attending this webinar. So I am part of the team uh, organizing this event also. So we are thankful for each one of you. So our lecture for this evening will focus on the Dominican mission in Manawa, hence the title, Dimat Apo Yaman Tatawa, the Dominican mission in Manawa. As we all know, Manawag is the fourth town founded by the Dominican missionaries in Pangasinan and it's the sole territory left to the order after the Philippine Revolution. So this lecture aims to present how Apu Baket, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, significantly influenced the presence of the Dominicans up to the present. And of course, we will also go with the timeline of the Dominican mission in Manawag and its contribution to the life and culture of the people of Manawa. To better understand this lecture, this will be the outline of my talk. So of course, we will deal about the arrival of the Dominicans in Pangasinan and the mission in Manawa, the brief history of the apparition and the significant events up before the revolution, the significant events after the return of the Dominicans after the Philippine Revolution, and lastly, the contribution of the friars to the people of Manawa particularly that of Father Chodolo Kahigal OP, who is the father and founder of Holy Rosary Academy of Manawa, now known as Letran Manawa. So the Christian faith arrived in Pangasinan even before the Dominicans arrived in 1587. By the time of 1575, we, are, we can already see some Augustinians in Pangasinan. So they are the first missionaries who preached the word of God in Pangasinan. So they were accompanying then the military forces under Don Juan Salcedo, who conquered Pangasinan and pursued Limahong, so the Chinese pirate, you know, when he escaped Pangasinan. So among these Augustinians were Fray Martin de Rada and Fray Pedro Holgado. However, finding the people adamant in receiving the benefit of their instruction, they moved to Lingayen because there in Lingayen are the Spanish civil and military authorities. So they are safe there. So very unhappy indeed due to the resistance that idolatrous natives offered to an attempt of conversion. So they found the people unresponsive, addicted to idolatry and the so-called Anitos. Kaya tinawag yung mga taga Pangasinan na Manag Anitos. No? So the Augustinians were unable to much uh, make a headway for the faith, the Catholic faith. So after establishing the missions in Lingayen, in Bagnotan, which is now Dagupan, and in Santa Monica, which is Manawag, they left Pangasinan and proceeded to the Ilocos provinces. So they founded churches in Ilocos. Of course, there are other missionaries who ministered in Pangasinan before the Dominicans. So there are the secular priests who unfortunately in history, we, they are not much recorded but they are just uh, cited. And also there are some Franciscan friars, notably Father Juan Bautista Pizarro and Sebastian de Baeza, who also attempted to evangelize the province. However, their efforts were all futile, no? unable to withstand the ferocious Pangasinan like their Augustinian predecessors. So they called Pangasinan as barren and ungrateful land. No? So mga taga Pangasinan dyan na nanonood, no? We are so ungrateful to the missionaries. But uh, as history tells us, diba, the Dominicans' first barcada, group of barcada, they are 15 brothers, arrived in the Philippines on July 22, 1587. That's the feast day of Saint Mary Magdalene. So one of the patroness of the Dominican order. So these 15 friars went to Intramuros after arriving in Cavite. So they went to ay uh, nakomotate kami ng mga Franciscans in their in, uh, church in Intramuros. So in front of the Franciscan church in Intramuros, para nagkaroon ng send off party, kumbaga, no? send off right para sa mga missionaries. So five of them stayed in Intramuros to found the convent of Santo Domingo in Manila. Four of them left for Bataan. And six of these friars uh, went eagerly to the mission in Pangasinan. So these are the six friars. So they traveled 194 kilometers and they established themselves in Binalatongan, which is now San Carlos City. So where they first accommodated in a simple, humble hut made of branches and leaves. So simple bahay lang. So in this place, they lost no time in erecting a small chapel dedicated to 
of course, St. Dominic. As you all know, whenever uh, the Dominicans go to a mission, they found the ch first church or the center, center of the mission as dedicated to St. Dominic, of course, our patron and father. The Dominicans began their mission in Pangasinan by learning the intricate Pangasinan dialect, which is now uh, slowly getting lost to the Pangasinan people also. So they studied Pangasinan without the aid of either grammar or vocabulary, which later on they will publish books on grammar and vocabulary in Pangasinan. So Binalatongan or San Carlos City became the center of the Dominican mission in Pangasinan. Of course, when the Dominicans started in Pangasinan, hindi naman agad-agad na parang miracle na the people were changed, yung mga managanitos. Of course, when the Dominicans first preached the gospel there, at first, they did not find the situation any better than what their predecessors did. But after initial difficulties, after three years, no, the resistance of the natives eventually broke down. So by the face of constant prayer and of course, the good example set by the friars. So how exactly Manawa comes into the picture? So after the Dominicans arrived in 1587, 1587 <laughs> Manawa, who is Santa Monica, is uh, under the administration of Augustinians. Of course, Augustinians, uh, uh, as, as I have said earlier, they are now holding uh, Lingayen, then Bagnotan, which is Dagupan, and Santa Monica, Manawa. So according to Father Gaspar de San Agustin, an Augustinian historian, the Augustinians took upon themselves the mission of Santa Monica, where they founded the church under the advocacy and patronage of the mother of St. Augustine. So they soon attached this place, Santa Monica, as a visita to Lingayen. So, sipin mo yung layo ng Lingayen sa Manawag. So the Augustinians accepted this mission on the 31st of October, 1600. Okay. However, as we look at the map, Manawag was too far from Lingayen. No? According to the Augustinians, it would be hard to continue this mission because if they journey no, going back to Lingayen from this visita, it would take them three days by river and two days by land. Of course, hindi na kayo ngayon. No? Pag nagbiyay kayo sa Pangasinan, madali na. But then, 30 kilometers is too far already. So what happened is they asked the Augustinians the Augustinians asked the Bishop of Nueva Segovia, Padre Diego de Soria OP, that since the Dominicans had already made their foundation in Mangaldan, which is much closer to Manawag with only nine kilometers of travel, the Augustinians willingly surrendered the ministration of Santa Monica in the hands of Bishop, the Bishop of Nueva Segovia, who in turn gave it to his brothers. Of course, he's a Dominican. He gave it to the spiritual care of the Dominicans. Siyempre, yung uh, Pangasinan noon, mostly Dominicans na yung uh, nag-administer, nag-minister. No? The province of the Holy Rosary accepted this offer, Santa Monica, and placed this mission to Father Juan de San Jacinto, who at that time is the vicar of Mangaldan. Siyempre, mas malapit yung Mangaldan at yung mag-aalaga ng Manawag, of course, yung vicar or the parish priest kung baga, yun yung level ng parish priest ng time na yan. And because of the sanctity and knowledge of the Dominican fathers who went there, their knowledge of Pangasinan, the language, the people loved the brethren who went there. So this happened in the year 1605. Although Father Juan de San Jacinto is considered to be the father and founder of Pangasinan, of Manawag, sorry, uh, the town now recognizes that their foundation started with the Augustinians. Of course, when you see the logo of Manawag, no, uh, makita nyo doon, uh, 1600 yung foundation nila. And the town celebrates it every October 7, 1600. Tandaan nyo, sinabi ko kanina, the Augustinians accepted the uh, visita of Santa Monica, October 31. Pero siguro dahil Our Lady of Holy Rosary, kaya October 7, 1600 yung pinili ng town, ng municipality. Now, the community of Santa Monica is not uh, is not where the present site is, uh, yung ngayong simbahan, no? kung nasan yung simbahan ngayon. But the initial community of Santa Monica found itself a target of attacks kasi nandun pa sila sa previous place, no? sa Balokin, no? Balokin o Balokin. So, so, Manawag is surrounded by Igorots and Aitas or Negritos living in the neighboring hills. So, these people attack the, not only the missionaries, of course, 
but also the people who live in Manawag. So that's when the Dominicans accepted the mission, Father San Jacinto transferred the town, the center of the town, and the church to its present site now, that is in Pogalo or Pogaro. So ngay ngayon, tinatawag natin siyang Pogaro. So that's, those are uh, hills, yung hillside ng Manawag, no? to keep them off, yung mga aitas, tsaka yung igorots natin. So as you can see in this uh, map, and yung center, yan yung barangay poblasyon ngayon. So ito yung Santa Monica, yan yung place ng Santa Monica Mission, yan yung Baloking. Tapos dito yung Pogalo or Pogaro, pero ngayon poblasyon na siya. Dito sa may bandang upper na lang yung barangay Pogaro. So but by the time of 1605, ginawa ng manawag yung place. So makikita natin mamaya yung development. So when Father Juan de San Jacinto founded the church there in Manawag, in Santa Monica or Manawag, he thought of building a chapel dedicating to Our Lady of the Rosary. So this or a succeeding church must have been of light materials. According to Father Eduardo, it is made of the roof of the church and the house was of nipa shingles. Diba? Very simple chapel lang. So let's go on with the briefly to the apparition story. No? The apparition was described in detail by Padre Salvador Millan and Opi in his book, The History of Manawag. So there was a farmer, Indio pang tawag sa atin dito, who suddenly heard a voice of ineffable softness calling him by name. He caught sight of a very white and resplendent cloud, which resting on the top of a very leafy tree. So a heavenly vision appeared before his eyes. In the center of the cloud appeared a lady who was the virgin of the rosary and her most holy son, who wished a shrine to be erected in her honor in that same place. No, in that same place. So when the Indio or the farmer uh, saw that the appearance was uh, already disappeared, he approached the tree to devoutly kiss it. No, but he stopped immediately because. Among its branches, he saw a carved image of the Virgin of the Rosary with the child, also carved in her arms. So he went to the missionary, tas pumunta sila dun pabalik, and the missionary collected the image, taking it back to the Church of Santa Monica. So now, we have two questions here. I know it. Pumasok na sa isip nyo. When did the apparition happen? No? And where did the image come from? Kasi sa text ni Father Milan, he is speaking of an image found in the branches of the tree. So let's go into it. Let's answer first the first question. When did the apparition happen? No? According to the municipality of Manawag, they claim that it is during the occupancy of the Augustinians that an important religious event occurred that pilgrimage became the etymological beginning of what is now called the municipality of Manawag. While Father Mariano Rodriguez O.P. in his book, of the history of the Our Lady, he stated in Pangasinan, so we translate, when they transferred the place of the church and the center of the town in the place where the local dialect calls by the name Pogalo or Pugaro, from that day in the year 1605, they named the town Manawag. So this is the place where the church is standing at the present time. Okay, It's on top of a hill. So as we understand Father Rodriguez's words, uh, when the Dominicans arrived in 1605, the pilgrimages could already be happening. So, nangyayari na yung pilgrimage to Manawag. That's why when they transferred from, when Father Sanacinto transferred to, Man, to the present site, he already named the town Manawag. No? The present name of the settlement was derived from the word, from the Pangasinan word, Tawag, no? to call. As the people of Pangasinan or the pilgrims, no? yung mga pumupunta dun, would describe the place. Sabi nila, Diad apo yaman tatawag, no? In the place, to the place where the virgin who calls, no? Dun sa, dun sa birhen na tumatawag, okay? According to Professor Regalado Trotaose, our speaker on the first day of the webinar, the transfer to Pugaro can be taken into two perspectives. So, but it is not quite clear in the written history which came first, the decision to transfer to the new site on the hill, dalawa, so it can be because of the defense, against the Igorots and Aitas, or the call of our lady to the farmer, diba? Now, but what we can know in the history is that the present site where the church is now is believed to be the place where the apparition happened. So according to Father Rodriguez in Pangasinan, yan, uh, 
translate na natin yung naka-yellow, no? Akawalaan na tay santuario. Kung nasaan ngayon yung sanctuary, yung sanctuary, yung church, no? So, according to Father Milan, the date and the year of the appearance are unknown, as well as the name of the lucky Indio who was the object of such honorable honor, favor. But uh, as for the time of the appearance, it must necessarily have occurred from 1605 to 1610. Medyo kakaiba yung kanyang claim. No? So we don't really know when and what uh, came first, and it needs further study. Okay. Where is the origin of the image? Yan yung second question natin. So there are two claims. From Mexico. So una, from Mexico. Nakaugalian na nila magdala. So yung mga Dominicano daw. Uh, Father Rodriguez would tell us in Pangasinan, but I will translate it roughly. No? Nakaugali na nila na magdala na parang patrona nila para sa sasakyan nila. So when they go to a mission, they will always bring an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And maaring ipinagbili ng mga Dominicong pari na pupunta sa Pilipinas. So, o kaya nang galing sa isang simbahan or konvento doon sa Mexico. So, ang claim ni Father Rodriguez, it can be, no, pwedeng galing sa Mexico. Pero, it was clarified to us by Professor Regalado Trota Jose. No? Sabi niya, the image of Our Lady manifests her Filipino and Oriental origins. So, large eyes, impassive gaze, fleshy nose, long neck, long fingers. No? So, these are traits of the 17th century Philippine ivory images. No? So because of uh, because of the researches now, no, mas marami na tayong alam tungkol sa images, ivory images. We can no, actually know more of the origin. So because we alam na natin, we know that the image is Philippine made. Okay. So in 1608, Manawag was deemed to be uh, stable enough to be a house of the Dominicans. No. So in 1608, the provincial chapter accepted it as a house, indicating na meron ng presence ng ilang friars doon. So in 1610, it was deemed stable enough to become a vicaria, which is the equivalent of a parish. So the first church, as I have said, is made of uh, nipa, no? very simple. Lang. So 1610 yan ha, 1610, 1608, 1610. Tapos we have after a day, after a century, 1701 to 1722. Saka nagkaroon ng uh, proper church or sabi nating cementadong simbahan no mas matibay na simbahan because in 1701 after almost a decade no a Spaniard uh, captain Gaspar de Gamboa and her wife Doña Agata Yangta who formerly lived in Manila but the resident of Lingayen out of his great devotion to ours our lady so he went there in Manawag and he saw how poor uh, how poor is the place the church where the lady is enshrined so he began the construction of a church for the town and the people of Manawag. So which later on in June 8, 1722, he donated it to the Dominican order by a deed of donation, inter vivos, done before the Alcalde Mayor of Pangasinan, Gaspar Sanchez Bernardo de Quiros, and in the presence of his wife, si Agata Yanta. So they donated it on June 8, 1722, do not finish, no? So, anong, anong kinalabasan, sabi ni Father Fernandez, a cute but beautiful church, but cute kasi it's too small, no? little small no? sa population ng Manawag nun. Besides from the church, meron ding donate si Gaspar de Gamboa, yung Humiladero, that is a small chapel or hermitage erected near the site of the present cemetery now in Balaking. So, the Humiladero is a place of enthronement for the image of the Our Lady when it was brought out in solemn procession across the Balaking River. So, and drinawingan ko yung mapa ng Manawag, no? So, we can see the yellow line. Yan yung dating uh, linya ng procession. So, going to Balaking River, tapos i, uh, pupunta siya sa Humiladero, there prayers will, will be recited, and then the procession will continue. But now, yung red na lang, no? Before the Balaking Bridge, no? Before the bridge in Balaking, babalik na yung position. Tuloy-tuloy na lang siya. No? So, Doña Agata, yang, uh, Agata Yangta validated this donation on April 13, 1733 kasi uh, they validated this because it was needed since the church had been built with their common savings. Gamit yung common savings nila. 
So, Doña Agata died on January of 1753 and is buried in the presbytery of the church. But now we can see it when we go to Manawag, we can see it in the chapel of the Sacred Heart, the former baptistry, no? Together with Doña Agata Yangta, our former parish priests of Manawag. So, Diego Perez, Juan Salinas, Francisco Garcia, Father Benito Fraga, which uh, Sir, uh, Sir Ricky already discussed to us yung book niya, di ba? Na nakita sa UST. So the church was uh, continually spruced up. Maraming earthquakes na dumating. 1832 and 1833. So necessity repairs kasi dahil sa earthquake. The tower and facade were whitewashed. In 1880, another earthquake no, uh, happened that cracked the bell tower which had to be torn down. So nawala na yung bell tower na 1880. 1882, construction for a transept, yung gilid. No? Kasi pahaba lang usually yung simbahan na pinafaw ng Dominicans. Yung side yung transept, 1882 na isip, no? So, in inayos na nila. So, 1883, a baptistry rose on the site of the demolished belfry. So, pinalitan ng baptistry. But on March 16, 1891, the Dominican province no, of the Holy Rosary renounced temporal ownership of all its churches and conventos in the Diocese of Nueva Segovia, wherein Pangasinan is still under Nueva Segovia. In favor of the bishop of that diocese, Monsignor Jose Hevia Campomanes OP, who, who is himself a Dominican. You know? So they renounced everything except Manawag, of course. The only property retained was Manawag by virtue of the session made in the early 18th century. Kasi dinonate ito ni Gaspar de Gamboa sa, sa uh, Holy Rosary province, so hindi nila pwedeng basta basta bibitawan. And of course, more importantly, because of its religious and sentimental value to us Dominicans. Kasi since Manawag has been blessed with the sanctuary of our Blessed Lady of the Rosary, and it still has been and it still is a center of pilgrimages, according to Father Fernandez. So this is a very crucial place for us Dominicans sa Philippines. No? Hindi lang yung uh, Santo Domingo Church, but also the place of Manawag. Kasi, of course, this is uh, where the uh, meron tayong apparition story na nangyari. So, very important sa atin to. And later on, may kita nyo, why is it important to us also Filipino Dominicans? Okay. In March 1892, nagkaroon ng mas malakas na earthquake. No? This time, more destructive than the rest. So, in just over six seconds, there was a destruction from Agno River and Lingayen Gulf. No? So, makikita nyo dito yung simbahan ng San Jacinto in the upper left and in the upper right yung simbahan ng Mangaldan. So, pagpunta kayo sa simbahan ng San Jacinto at Mangaldan, iba na yung itsura. The same is true with Manawag, yung nasa baba. Yan yung Manawag. So, it was destroyed. As a result, it was deemed necessary to demolish the whole of the Gamboa Church, yung pinagawa ni Gamboa, by the year 1896. No? The walls of the new church were thought to be by the year 1896, nagpagawa na sila ng walls, so it, it, they deemed it high enough to put the roof. However, another incident happened in 1896, and we know it sa history ng Philippines. It's the advent of the Philippine Revolution. So that's the cause why natigil yung construction. By May 10, 1898, habang yung Tagalog provinces are still at peace because of the Biak na Bato Pak, di ba? The insurgents of Pangasinan assaulted Manawag and put to the torch the provisional chapel or camarin of the, the Our Lady. No? Sinunog nila. Kasama doon yung three unlucky sacristans and the jewelry of the Our Lady. So kaya halos wala nang naiwan. The image, however, escaped. And, uh, ba, paano kaya nangyari yun? Because it, it had been removed beforehand and thrown into a nearby ravine by the revolutionaries themselves no? who wanted to carry it off as a trophy. Pero tinapon nila sa ravine. The image was later found by Father Jose Puente after returning from his hiding. So after nagtago, nakita nila. So nung nakita nila na it's dangerous if, Man if the image of Manawag will stay in Manawag, so they decided to transfer it to Dagupan. The, the final stronghold of the Sp Spaniards sa so Pangasinan. So they transferred it in June 19, 1898. 
So, with the volunteers of Villasis, Surubio, and Manawag, sa inyo mga kakampi ng mga Espanyol during that time, mga volunteers. So, they arrived in Dagupan, June 27, 1898. So, Dagupan surrendered July 22, 1898. And then, when the when Dagupan surrendered, the people of Manawag claimed the image. So, they wanted to be back. So by October 1898, they claimed the, uh, the image uh, with the authorization of Filipi Filipino military authorities. Then when the Dominicans returned years after, they found the image in a poorly sheltered uh, Nipa chapel no? without niche, altar, and temple. So simple lang. The return of the Dominicans was brought about by this uh, secular priest, Father Mariano Pachis who is a Dominican tertiary. So he was installed in January 27, 1901. He was assigned there. But he invited the Dominicans to come back and celebrate the traditional novena of the Virgin. Kasi ito, malapit na to sa fiesta. No? And of course, sinabi rin niya, he has a request to the provincial, to the province and to the provincial na kung pwede, i-repair, no? magkaroon, mag-build ng shrine para sa Virgin. So, it was uh, granted. So Father Paya, the provincial of uh, the Holy Rosary, chose three brothers, three fathers, no, who are fluent in Pangasinan and who has already worked in Pangasinan. So they reached Manawag in on April 14, 1901. So yun ang pagbabalik ng Dominicans sa Manawag. Pero they stayed in a humble residence, not in the convent. Kasi ang, ang nakatira sa convent during that time, is the American troops. So they stayed in, uh, the Americans are staying in the convent from December 1899 to January 16, 1902, which is shown in the letter of Father Pedro Linacero, the Procurator General of the Corporation of the Holy Rosary Province. So in the, in the book of Father Villaruel, we can see the let letter no, that Father Linacero is asking the United States to pay $3,240 for the use of the convent, pangbayad sa renta, you know. But we uh, we will also learn that this claim was not included in an updated letter kasi nagkaroon sila ng bagong meeting, tinanggal na nila yung ibang claims nila. Nag-focus na lang sila sa Santo Domingo, tapos yung convent sa Cavite, and then the buildings in Togegarao in 1906. But according to Father Villaruel, it was not known if the Americans satisfied this claim. So, walang alam kung binayaran sila. At this point, 1902, 1906, and 1910, nagkaroon na ng rebuilding, rebuilding of the church. No? So, by this time, the, the reconstruction was completed in time for the April Feast, 1906. No? Pero, yung transept na pinaplano nila, yung sa gilid, hindi natuloy kasi wala nang pera yung mga Dominicans na ubos ang kanilang uh, pera. So, Ang nangyari, yung simbahan, para siyang mahabang, mahaba, mahabang, mahaba siya, hindi balanse, no? It was, uh, according to the historians, it was described as a dark, ano, long tunnel, parang ganun siya. In 1910 and 19, to 1912, there are new improvements in the church. So, yung the floor of the church was paved, uh, the ceiling was made of wood, the interior walls were replastered, and the, and the facade. A room was added at the back of the sanctuary, that is the sacristy behind the main altar. As sa taas ng sacristy, meron yung tinatawag nating Our Lady's Dressing Room. Until now, ganun pa rin yung construction ng yung sacristy. Tapos sa taas, merong room sa taas. So may kita nyo dito sa next slide natin. Itong slide na to, may kita nyo, binubuhat pa natin ng mga tagamanawag yung image kapag piyesta, pag binababa si Apo Bakit. Pero ngayon, hindi na. Yung taas, hindi na siya dressing room. Isa na siyang veneration area. Kapag pupunta kayo ng Manawag, dyan yung uh, uh, nagkakaroon ng beso manto, di ba? Tapos sa kabila, yung, yung image sa right, ganyan na nangyayari ngayon pag binibihisan si Our Lady of Manawag. So sa sacristy na lang siya binibihisan. May elevator na lang siyang bababa. Ano? Now, <clears throat> as stated before, Manawag is the only territory, only convent and shrine left to the administration of the Dominicans after the renunciation in 1891. So the bishop in 1912 is Bishop Campomanes, 
Si Bishop Campomanes understood that there's no difficulty in recognizing the right ownership of the shrine to the Dominicans. Ang nagmamayari ng shrine is the Dominicans. However, when Father Pachis was succeeded by Father Manuel Corrales, another secular priest, there was some time that he uh, created trouble and tension with the Dominican fathers. So by 1912, as a result of negotiations, Father Corrales retained the title of parish curate, but renounced the administration of the parish in favor of the Dominicans in consideration of a certain share in the parochial revenue. So 1912, meron pang secular priest sa Manawag, pero parang titular na lang yung pagiging parish curate niya dun. By January 15, siyempre, as a result of new negotiations, so between Father Serapio Tamayo of the Diocese, Father Pedro Rosa of the Dominicans, and the Bishop Pedro Hearth, the Sacred Congregation of the Council installed the, the Dominicans' order of uh, in perpetual possession of the parish of Manawang. So sila na yan, in perpetua, no? ad nutum sancte sedis, uh, on January 15, 1912, by the Holy See. So, pagkatapos niyan, nung sa atin na yung manawag, of course, nung sa Dominicans niya, Father Mariano Rodriguez was the parish priest in 1925. So, he requested His Holiness, he, he elevated a petition to His Holiness, Pope Pius XI, for the canonical coronation of manawag. So, tuloy-tuloy na tong improvements ng, uh, ng shrine. Ano? So, by the by the date of August 12, 1925, His Holiness granted the petition through the Sacred Congregation of Rites. So makikita niyo dito sa uh, sa images na inattach ko, yan yung makikita niyo sa Bulletin Ecclesiastico de Filipinas. Yung ana uh, circular letter ni Bishop Hearth, no? Na humihingi siya ng tulong sa uh, sa clergy to the faithful people in in the diocese in the whole diocese of Nueva Segovia to help in the preparation for the festivities. Ano? So, ang, ang remind niya is the Holy Father expressed his wish to contribute for the gold and jewels of the, for the crown of the Our Lady and the Child. So, dito naman sa kabila, sa right side, may kita natin yung parang invitation program sa Bulletin Ecclesiastico also. We can see the nine days novena before the canonical coronation. So by April 21, 1926, we had the canonical coronation at 7 o'clock a.m. So we see here the Apostolic Delegate, Kugliel Mopiani, SDB, who placed the crown on Our Lady, while the Archbishop of Manila, Michael J. Odoherty, crowned the Holy Child. So we can see here members of the hierarchy and representative groups of both secular and regular clergy. So there were uh, cheers, multitude of explosions, firecrackers, so maraming tao ng time na to. It's a very uh, big celebration for the people of Pangasinan. By the span of 1931 to 1932, yung plan ni Father Hilario del Campo na transept in 1880 were finally realized. So may kita nyo sa image dyan, may kita nyo yung transept sa gilid. So it was fully functional na by that time. Another project is the octagonal dome. So may kita nyo yung dome. Napakaganda ng dome na yan. Consisting of a wooden framework. Diba? Sheathed with galvanized iron sheets. So also uh, installed is the pair of Tampinko altar pieces. So uh, partner yan ng Tampinko uh, retablo. No? So may kita nyo dito sa Tampinko altar pieces sa side, sa end of the transept. Kita nyo yung image ni San Roque at saka yung Holy Family. Pero ngayon, ang image na nandyan na ngayon ay si St. Vincent at saka si St. Martin. So yung Holy Family napunta sa sa main altar tapos later on, pinalitan ulit, nilagay na siya sa museum ngayon. So four murals also were installed by the local artist Zarate. So ito yung makikita nyo, yung mga important events or miracles ng Manawag. Tapos syempre yung, uh, yung dome na napakaganda. Okay. By the time of 1942, of course, the Japanese invaded our country. But according to the Dominicans, it caused no trouble in the in Pangasinan because there were scarcely any fighting in the province. So the community of Baguio, the Dominicans in Baguio, seek refuge in Manawag because at peace dun eh. Pero by the time of January 9, 1945, 
when the Allied forces landed in the Gulf of Lingayen, it's another story according to them. So Manawag suffered great damage. You know? The bombing squadron of the Americans. Uh, according to Father F Pablo Fernandez, by the number of bombs that the landed on the convent and the church, akala ng Dominicans is the Japanese the Japanese resistance are hiding in that place. Pero sabi ni Father Fernandez, the truth was there were no Japanese soldiers in Manawag either, in the place of Manawag. So, uh, sayang, no? Nabomba yung simbahan without intelligence, siguro. Father Mariano Sanchez and the lay brother, Fray Emilio Orizo, were hit by a bomb as they were running from cover from the sacristy to a trench dug in the convents. Kasi nahati yung friars nung nung January 9, 1945. Yung iba, pumunta sa Baloking. Yung iba naman sa sa convent nagstay. Itong dalawang brothers na to, sila yung nagstay sa convent and they died. No? Now they are buried, you know, they are buried in the Columbari of Santo Domingo in Quezon City. You will see them there. So both the convent and the church were extensively damaged from their wreck hits. No? Uh, soon after, the community returned to the shrine. They, they checked the shrine and from a closer examination, they see na pwede pa pala. There's a possibility of repairing it. And they were helped by the Americans in repairing the church. Kaya nagstay yung Americans during that time. So, in 1947, the Spanish era convento sa side, sa right side when you're facing the, sh the shrine, yan na yung school, no, ngayon. A new convento was built on the north and on the other side in 1947. The construction lasted from January 4 to August 15, 1954. Part of that project is the new uh, bell tower, the modern bell tower attached now. So yung nakikita nyo ngayon sa Manawag, that's the new bell tower made in 1954 with a new bell that still sounds until today, which is very uh, familiar sa mga de devoto ng Manawag kapag piyesta, no, pag bumabalik na yung birhen, pag lumalabas na rin yung birhen. So this is now the present church with, uh, that we are seeing. So with some recent modifications nung naging minor basilica. Nung 1971, the convent, now known as Priory of Our Lady of the Rosary, is now under the newly established Dominican province of the Philippines, or as we say, the Filipino province. A new sanctuary was erected in or around 1976 kasi nagkaroon na siya ng transept, so hindi nakikita yung altar, so they need to move it to that place, to the center. And sabi nila, according to history, it is believed that this place of the altar is the original site of the throne of Our Lady in the former church. No? Okay. By 1990, ito na, why is it important to us Dominicans? Kasi the Manawag is now the place, no, the home of the novitiate of the Filipino Dominicans. Here we stay for 14 months. It's a home for the novices. So it's a... Uh, in the lower end of the slope of the church property. So it was opened on March 25, 1990. So ang mga first batch niyan, sila, yung father prior namin, si Father Oji, of course, sila yon, sila yung first batch niyan. By 2011, it's, uh, there are other special events that followed. So ito yung 2011, April 21. Uh, the Pope granted us the special bond of spiritual affinity with the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome. So Manawag Shrine is the first in the Philippines who had this status, no? May mga sumunod, dalawa pa yata. So this bond makes pilgrims assured of the same blessings when you visit a uh, papal basilica in Rome. So plenary indulgence, yeah. By February 17, 2015, another uh, event happened. It's, that is the solemn proclamation of the church as a minor basilica. So more than 100 archbishops and bishops attended this event. So I was there as a server, altar server. Uh, the latest significant event is the declaring of the minor basilica as a national cultural treasure last December 23, 2015, but it was unveiled last 2018, no, February 17. So may kita nyo yung sila bishop dyan. So other contributions of the Dominicans, uh, ni lang yung devotion sa Our Lady of Manawag, but also, they also helped in other things. They contributed a lot to the lives of the people, not only to the spiritual needs, but also to the economy and development of the town and the province. So 
the contributions are like built sila ng roads, bridges, no? Linking Manawag to its neighboring towns. So the road to San Jacinto, the road to Ordaneta, the bridge of uh, in Baloquin, no? Tapos uh, Father Ramon Fernandez founded Binalonan, but before that he opened the road in 1838 to 1848. Ganong katagal kasi according to them, there are two thick impenetrable forests bago na open yung road to Binalonan. You know, Binalona is a barangay of Manawag during that time. So it was founded by Ramon Fernandez. But one of the biggest uh, contribution uh, for me no, of the friars is the gift of education, Catholic education, the gift of Father Shodolo Kahigal OP to Manawag. Father Kahigal is one of the Dominican missionaries uh, who is loved and remembered greatly by the people of Manawag until today. You know? He spent 48 years in Manawag from his arrival in 1932 to 1980. He is buried in the Manawag Catholic Cemetery. When you visit the cemetery, he is there at the back. Hindi mo nga lang puntahan kasi sarado yung chapel. So Manawag Cemetery was attended by crowds of people, no? not seen since the canonical coronation of the Our Lady in 1926. So nung nilibing daw si Father Kahigal, the people are all there, no? Pumunta silang lahat, kagaya nung parang sa canonical coronation. They are, the people really love Father Kahigal. So Father Kahigal is from Salamanca, Spain. He was the parish priest from 1954 to 1974. Ang tagal. So when the Dominican province uh, of the Philippines was founded in 1971, the, uh, the Spaniards, the the friars who are from Spain went back and Father Kahigal opted to stay in Manawag. So later he became a Filipino citizen and later on he was named adopted son, son of the town of Manawag. So the people really loved him. So as early as 1904, meron ng public education sa Manawag, founded by the Americans, by the Thomasites. But Father Kahigal came up with a way to address the Catholic need, naman, the Catholic education of the children of Manawag. So at first, according to uh, some of the people in Manawag, Father Kahigal held Sunday school from 2 to 5 p.m. inside the church. That yan yung ginagawa niya noon. Until naisip niya, there's more to this, di ba? So he converted the old convento into a church in 1947. So he opened the Academia del Santo Rosario. So... The school opened July 1, 1947. With the help of, of course, uh, we asked for help from the sisters, the Franciscan sisters of the Immaculate Conception, the Dominican daughters of the Immaculate Mother, and at present, the, the Missionera sisters. By the year 2001, itong school na to founded college, the, the college department with Father uh, Patricio Apa as the director during that time. Uh, Grade 1 pa lang po ako nito. Nag-change ito to Our Lady of Manawag College. Tapos noong 2014, nag-change na naman ito, rebranded to Colegio de San Juan de Letran, Manawag. As mandated by the 10th Provincial Chapter of the Dominican Province of the Philippines in 2012. So it's now under the one Letran system of uh, Letran Manila, Calamba, Bataan, and Manawag. So the other system is the UST system. So the Dominican mission in Manawag also produced a number no, unti lang, of Dominican friars native from this place. So sabi ni, uh, according to Father Bruno Cadure, the former master, when he talked to me, he asked me, where are you from? I'm from Manawag, I said. Ta sabi niya, from the place where the lady who calls, but a few, a few answers, no? unti lang yung sumasagot sa tawag. So these brothers are Father Hector Marinas, who is already deceased. Father Manuel Ru, Father Conrado Mara, Father Pablo Chong, Brother Philip Dorosa, tapos ako po. Ano? So, unti lang. Uh, ilang friars lang. So, until the present, even in the midst of the pandemic, the Minor Basilica of Manawag attracts devotees. Kahit ngayon, no? Medyo uh, open yung Manawag ngayon sa pilgrims, kahit sa mga galing sa ibang place, ibang provinces. Not only from the province, not only from the country, but also from abroad. Maraming pumupunta sa Manawag. The Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag has been tagged as the Pilgrim Center of the North. Mary is endearingly called her uh, dito, tinatawag namin siyang Apo Bakit. It's a local term meaning Venerable Elder Lady. 
So we, that's our uh, fun, uh, loving endearment sa kanya. So millions of devotees and pilgrims flock here to ask prayers from the Virgin who calls. So every day, significantly Saturdays and Sundays. So whole year round, millions of people flock to this town to attend Mass, pray the rosary, offer flowers, and light candles at the back. O kaya uh, pabless nila yung kanilang mga sasakyan. Pilgrimages peak during the Lenten season and Easter season, and of course, during the months of April, May, and October. Now, uh, dito makikita nyo sa Twitter, no? when you search for Manawag, kita nyo yung uh, trend to the uh, young people now. So they go to Manawag to ask for prayers for their board examinations. You know? And of course, others naman for working abroad. May kita nyo yung mga uh, nagbo-board exam, they hold their pencils, no? yung kanilang mga papers, yung bag nila, yung calculator nila, passports, no? to be touched to the image of Our Lady. So they, parang sort of uh, traditional ng mga nagtitake ng board to, tapos pinapasa nila to sa mga susunod hanggang naging practice na nila. So when one goes to Manawag, one will not miss the chance to, ch to touch the original image sa veneration area, which is the former dressing room of the Our Lady. So here, hundreds of people line up. So may kita nyo dito sa kabila, di ba nagla-line up na sila? Yan. Hanggang dito na sa present, ganun pa rin. Ano? Of course, dahil pandemic na yun, I think this is uh, still closed. Another devotion to behold is the monthly Dawn Rosary that happens every first Saturday of the month at 4 a.m. And of course, the feast days during the second Sunday of October and every third Wednesday of Easter, the town feast. According to Father Fernandez, the town feast usually is a uh, kasabay ng uh, foundation of the province. Yan yung kasabay niya. Pero now it's third Wednesday of Easter na. So the official re replica images of the Our Lady of Manawag is also being borrowed by many parishes nationwide. So siguro yung parish nyo baka nahiram na yung replica image ng Manawag. So they bumabiyahe yung Manawag. Even in Visayas, no? Tapos, of course, the Basilica also had given official replica images in London and in California. No? So may kita nyo dito sa Rosary Shrine in London under the Dominicans din to. And in the right side, may kita nyo dyan yung Bisita ni Maria, where in the image of Our Lady of Manawag goes around the BECs in Manawag. So dati, it's the lady who calls, but now it's the lady who goes. No? Pupunta na siya sa mga barangay. So the devotion to Apo Baket molded not only the culture and traditions in Manawag, but also cultivated the mission of the Dominicans in Manawag. So Apo Baket is very instrumental in the evangelization of Manawag until now. And until this day, to the whole Pangasinan. So I want to share with you the reflection of Bishop Sok. According to him, when Mary had an apparition, the image was named according to the place, to the name of the place, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Fatima. But in Manawag, the place was named according to the action of Mary. Mary who calls us. Diyad virihen yaman tatawag. So I hope you learned uh, a lot and I hope it sparked some interest in you to visit and be a devotee of the Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Brother Wilhelm, for your very comprehensive, insightful, and enlightening talk. I am sure a lot of our participants here have deepened their understanding on how traditions surrounding Apa Baket contributed to the growth in faith of Pangasinenses and the development of the town. But before we proceed to our open forum, to reiterate as a reminder for those who would like to avail of the certificates, you are required to accomplish an evaluation form at the end of the session. It will serve as your proof of participation during this webinar, and I will post the link to the Google form in the Zoom chat box later. So now at this point, I guess Brother Wilhelm is ready to answer your question. So let us proceed. <laughs> we have a lot of interesting questions here. The first one is from Sir James Benedict Malabana. So the question is, was there any ecclesiastical investigation regarding the apparition in Manawa? Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, according to historians, no, we attribute it as a tradition. 
it was not really accepted as a miracle or an official apparition. So uh, some historians would uh, would say na legend, no. But it's a tradition. For me, it's a tradition. I don't like to use the word legend, no. So basically, wala po lang ano, walang confirmation from the diocese. Okay, here is another question from Mr. Gabriel Madrid OP, a lay Dominican. Uh, could you tell us any of the early recorded miracles of Our Lady of Manawa? Ah, okay. So basically, di ko na siya inisa isa kasi feeling ko hahaba. Pero uh, I think kailangan natin balikan to. Wait. So you can see in this wall, ito yung pinaka parang memorable uh, miracles ng Our Lady of Manawag. So dun sa yung maliit na image dyan na may nanay tsaka bata. As according to history, is, uh, the, the, the woman is from Binmalay and the child is uh, sick. So going to Manawag, they are asking for help to, to heal the child. But going to Manawag, the child died. So they, they still continued going to Manawag. And when they are in Manawag, so they place the child in front of the image. And so miraculously, the child uh, came back alive. No? So that's one of the miracles of Our Lady. And of course now, no, siguro last week lang yata, uh, Corina Sanchez uh, released a parang short video clip no, or vlog kumbaga, about Manawag. No? So the miracles uh, attributed to Manawag. Until now, there's, there are um, modern, no, yung contemporary miracles happening. So yung mga, baba, uh, mga humihingi ng anak, di ba? Mga humihingi ng partners, di ba? Yung, yung mga students natin who go there for their board exams, those who are asking for work. Actually, we, we pray for them, eh, the Dominicans. So as novices, we pray for your intentions in Manawag. So when you write your petition, sinuhulog nyo sa dun sa altar ni Mama Mary. So, pinagdadasal yan ng mga novices during Sundays. So, with the help of the Dominican novices, your intentions are being prayed for. So, yun siguro, Brother J.M. Okay, very well said. Here is another question from Nicole Hidalgo from Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frasati Community, lay Dominican then from USD Legaspi. Her question is, what is the turning point of the people from Pangasinan to totally leave their beliefs to Anitos? Ah, okay. I think the turning point is, uh, according to history, no, in the place of Mangaldan, no, si Kasipit, no, it's a, parang a head of the town or a leader. So when that uh, person converted, so everybody followed, parang ganon, so everybody followed. But it's after the three years of after three years of evangelizing the people, so maybe because they saw how eagerly the the friars would speak in Pangasinan, no, to teach the people, of course, living with the people, and of course, sa Benila, holiness, of course, holiness of the friars. Sana na sagot kyo yung tanong. Yes, yes, brother. So we again have. Two questions from Sir Romeo Tuazon from the Diocese of Balanga, Bataan. The first question is, is it possible that the image of Our Lady of Manawag and Our Lady of Orani in Bataan were carved simultaneously when the Dominicans arrived in the Philippines? And another question, why the complexion of Our Lady of Manawag fairly white while the image of Our Lady of Orani, Bataan is fair or morena? Thank you, Paul. I think what explains this uh, yung complexion ng image is the the value of the ivory no yung gano ka ganda yung ivory na ginamit in order for the image to be ano yung ginamit na ivory for the image so I don't know if uh, possible that it's simultaneously but it's a good topic for research no to see uh, ano yung mga images na ginawa during that time. But it's possible. Okay. Another question is from Sir Israel Mendoza from the Archdiocese of Lipa. His question is, is the former site in Pugaro can be visited by pilgrims and what is present in the old site of Manawag Church? Okay. 
So now when you go to Baloking, no? Baloking po, hindi Pogaro. So the place now is where the Pogaro is, di ba? Yun yung Pogaro ngayon. Part siya ng Pogaro, Barangay Pogaro. Pero ngayon, it's now Poblacion. Of course, it's the center of the town. But the former place, the Santa Monica Mission, andun na po yung Catholic Cemetery ngayon. So you can see there the Catholic Cemetery. You can see traces of bricks pa rin. But uh, more or less, nakuha na ng pilgrims. According to the history, no? The pilgrims or the people of Manawag took the bricks of the Humiladero as souvenirs and as uh, so ganun yung mga tao dun, di ba? Kasi they want to have something from that place where Our Lady is uh, having miracles. So parang relics na nila yun. So naubos yung bricks dun sa place na yun. So ngayon it's just a Catholic cemetery, may chapel dun, but it's modern already. Okay. Uh, for the participants, thank you for your overwhelming participation. We want to cater to all your questions, but because of time constraints, let me just read one more question coming from uh, Mamar Neriza Rivera from Manawa. Her question is, do we have a copy of the document where Don Gaspar Gamboa and Agatha donation? Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, according to Father Fernandez, the deed of donation is verbal. It's verbal. Nagkataon uh, na verbal with the, of course, with the consent of the government. Yung parang gobernador during that time, alcalde mayor of Pangasinan. But uh, we don't have the written document. Maybe what we have is the provincial uh, acts of the provincial chapter of the province of the Holy Rosary. So yun yung pinaka parang patibay natin. Kaya medyo may nagkaroon, nagkaroon ng gulo, di ba? during the time of uh, Father Manuel Corrales. So, dahil doon na kailangan natin ng document from Rome to give it to us perpetually. Yun na po. Okay, thank you. I guess uh, that's a wrap. But before we end, we again would like to thank Brother Wilhelm O.P. for generously sharing his time and expertise and also to you, our attendees, for your very active participation. So to cap this activity, join me again in our closing prayer, the 13th century Domin Dominican blessing. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May God the Father bless us, may God the Son heal us, may God the Holy Spirit enlighten us, and give us eyes to see with, ears to hear with, hands to do the work of God with, feet to walk with, and mouth to preach the word of salvation with, and the angel of peace to watch over us and lead us at last by the Lord's gift to the kingdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Maraming salamat po.